Welcome to Love Always Self, a podcast about connection to self, reflections of self, and how this impacts our reality. We're all about trying to find balance, discovering tools for spiritual wellness, and creating a safe place to have loving conversations about a broad range of topics. I'm Karista, a spiritualist with a background in nursing, health coaching, and personal training. I believe in a holistic mindset where everyone and everything can work together in harmony by giving love and attention to the body, mind, and spirit so that we can create a more balanced life. I want to help guide you in your personal journey to create a life filled with joy, magic, and love. And I'm Shira, an explorer of personal truth with a background in program management, finance, and more recently, a spiritual intuitive, learning to connect with spiritual guides whom I like to call Mount Glass. I have an always growing passion to not only guide myself, but to also guide others in opening to and creating stronger connections with our highest self, allowing us to see and feel life in a whole new loving light. We believe that we are all connected, and by learning to love self, we will elevate the collective consciousness and learn to create deeper connections with each other, self, and source. As we grow and learn through our own life adventures and self-discoveries, we hope you gain insights into your own truth. Don't forget to subscribe to stay notified of new content. We would love to hear from you. So if you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please email us at contact at lovealwaysself.com. Or you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Love Always Self, and this will be linked in the show notes. Hey, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm super sore, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> holy moly. Uh, I was going to roll out of bed to come upstairs and, and start the recording for us. Right. And I like leaned over to the right and I was just like, Oh, oh what is that? <laughs> I honestly, like, I haven't just moved that much since surgery. And that was, um, it was so much fun. And uh, for the, the listeners, yesterday, Shira yeah. and I spent um, the whole day working on painting my new house on the inside, and it's an 1800 square foot house, and we're getting floors installed uh, tomorrow, and so we need uh, some of these uh, rooms that are getting floors installed uh, to be repainted, and so that's, that's the, it. 15 foot high ceilings, we've got scaffolding, we've got a paint sprayer, we've got rollers, we've got a lot of paint. Yeah. And there's a lot more to be done today. <laughs> yeah. And, and Carrie and I were using, um, we were the only ones in the house, like, cause like some of her husband's friends were there too and, uh, helping us out. And Carrie and I were the only ones going on the scaffolding, which was just mm-hmm. hilarious. And, and you know, like on the side of scaffolding, you have those ladders where you have to climb, but then you have to like maneuver your way around the ladder and get onto the actual um platform you, platform right I was like what do you call that balcony no uh <laughs> and I haven't climbed a ladder in so long <laughs> I was like "Ooh, okay how am I doing on heights how am I doing on heights I was like okay Carrie how about you take the third level and I'll take the second level so she was oh, like yeah. uh, I'm I'm monkey over here yeah. dude you were all about it I was like wow she's in her like treehouse happy place up yes. there <laughs> um, growing up I was like that was my favorite place to be was in the trees or on the roof somewhere high <laughs> oh my gosh I was like okay I'm good I'm super solid on this second level it's not that bad you know it's like it's I, like I'm, six feet up <laughs> yeah it's like only six. <laughs> and um and yesterday just man I mean we had a lot of fun doing it because we were using a spray gun and we were having the boys use yeah. the rollers <laughs> <laughs> and do all the trim work and like the details. <laughs> and one of his friends was probably looking at me like, she's boss lady. What the heck? And like, because I was like, how about you guys go do all the trim work and we'll continue spraying? <laughs> that's why you're basically a project manager <laughs> at your job. It's like, delegate, delegate, delegate. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that because I was very overwhelmed with all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. But man, we're so sore today. Uh, I, I mean, just hands down. I have not yes, worked our out. Hands, our hands, our hands, hands down are so sore. <laughs> Every Keep single finding. part of our body. My Weird. nose hurts <laughs> from wearing the rebreather, the, the mask. <laughs> so you don't inhale all the paint spray. Oh my God. And I forgot to wear the cover up during the painting. I, I forgot to put it on before painting. And so because we were covered in paint, I had to get in my car and I like my seats are leather. And I was like, uh oh. So I was like, oh, I'll wear the cover up on the way home. So I don't get the any- bunny suit. Yes. <laughs> bunny suit. With feeties. With feet. <laughs> it's got the little, so I wore that the whole way home. And of course, because you've got the, you know, the, the vid situation happening, people were like looking at me like, what is she wearing? <laughs> I like have a hazmat suit on driving home. (laughs) Freaking hilarious. You know, and it's just so funny because yesterday felt like this uh, learn your freaking lesson day on creating fears. It it really did. Uh, I had so many like mental thought processes going on yesterday uh, that were just so overwhelming. And, and it wasn't even just yesterday. It was kind of like a two days worth of, of me thinking like this. And so I noticed, I, I kind of realized this, like after, you know, you and I talked yesterday at your house, um, and it dawned on me, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, like while, while I was there and even more so when I got home and was like showering and cleaning up and stuff. Um, I was like, wow, I literally, created my own fears and like made them this full-blown reality in my head and and it wasn't even that like the fears about so yeah so let's talk about that (laughs) so (laughs) um and what's even more interesting as to why I wanted to bring this up today was because as soon as I was opening my notebook for us to you know look at topics that we wanted to cover and things like that um, deep within the notebook that's almost halfway done, right? Like pages and pages of this uh, information that we've had just starting our podcast and like doing work on this. Um, I somehow flip to the one page that doesn't have much writing on it, but at the very, very top, it says navigating fear. And I was like, well, shit, look at that. (laughs) So, so yeah, so basically uh, one of the things was uh, when, so I'm going to a retreat, right? And I decided to sign up for this retreat and and I really wanted you to go. And I created this fear in my head that you would be, even though like you and I are like the closest of friends, you you literally understand me so well and we communicate so well. And for some reason, I created some fear in my head that, that you were going to be sad or upset that I was going to go do this and you weren't going to come. And so I was like, cause I know you've got everything going on right now. So like I created this like fear in my head. And so when I was talking to you yesterday and I was like, oh gosh, how do I bring this up? How do I, how do I have this conversation with her? Like, and then you were like, no, babe, it's totally fine. And I'm like, what? Like, why was I shocked about that? You know, like, why did I create this like entire scenario in my head that wasn't real, like remotely? And I quite frankly should have known better, you know? So like, that's okay. I'm, you know, that was my own little self beating up. Don't, <laughs> but should have, could have, would have. Right, right. <laughs> but it was such a huge relief to just, realize that wow like sometimes you really do you do this like sometimes this is something that people do they create their these own like uh uh, thoughts and and situations before they even happen which is like the exact opposite of just being present right Mm -hmm. it's just looking to the future and deciding for the future that's not even occurred yet what's going to take place and then taking those situations and being in that emotional state of something that hasn't even happened yet. 
Yeah, that's, I mean, it, that's where a lot of anxieties come from, right? Right. Uh, when you're not focused on the present moment, when you are worried about the future or the past, you know, things that have not happened or things that have happened that you can't change. There's a lot of fear and stress and anxiety that are based in those non-present moment realities. Oh, yeah. And yeah, like when you brought it up to me, like, you were, you were trying to explain why it was important to you. And I, I think I cut you off and basically said, babe, if it's important to you, then it's important to me. And that's the end of it. Like, you don't have to tell me why you don't have to give me reasons. You don't have to sell me on it. I, I just, if you feel in alignment with it, if, if you are desiring it, then who am I to stand in your way of your personal growth and your decisions for your life? Right. And I keep hearing the word self-sabotage, mm. right? Like, like sabotaging, uh, is that even a word? Anyway, <laughs> thought, I was like, sabotaging, is that a word? Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you put an ING at the end of that? Um, so, uh, you know, it, I keep hearing self-sabotage or sabotaging behaviors, right? Um, this, this thought process of predicting outcomes in the future and not focusing on the ones that are positive, but focusing on the potentials of the ones that are negative and mm -hmm. that causing all of this stress and anxiety and sadness that I was experiencing and fear that I was experiencing. And, and I didn't even look at navigating towards the positive side during mm -hmm. those two days. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't like focusing on what would be the positive outcome of this. Um, or even at the same time, I wasn't even staying present in my current situation and just enjoying the fact that I'm doing something that I was so, am still so excited to do. Um, it, and that's just so fascinating to me. And just that awareness and that like aha moment of what did you just do there, Shira? Like, <laughs> let, let's talk about that, you know, like, like how do we navigate from those types of self-sabotaging behaviors and thought processes and, and start creating a space for ourselves to be more present and, and not having to just focus on negative future states that haven't even occurred or may not even ever occur. And being open to positive outcomes. And being open, right, right. So it's like, so then I went down this other little like mental rabbit hole after saying like all this, right. Or thinking all this. Um, and it was like, what in my past has caused me to behave this way? Like what have I been thinking about or holding on to from my own personal belief systems or things that have like happened to me in the past that would cause me to think that this is what my future state could potentially look like, or that my thought process would point towards that. Um, and so I was just thinking back on it and I was just like, wow, like, I think for me, it has a lot to do with things that I would have felt that were like let downs of, or surprised reactions that I would have gotten in my past where I was just like, whoa, I did not see that coming. Mm -hmm. um, and and having to really look within and, and think about like letting go of, of that, right? Like that's something that's already happened in the past and it no longer should affect my present. That's for not thinking about it for the future situations, right? I, I think some of it also comes from not wanting to disappoint other people, mm, Yeah, you know, not wanting to be there for everybody else and to support them as well and lift them up but not necessarily taking care of yourself first in that so feeling the need to bring everybody else with you wow so they don't feel left behind that was a nice profound statement if my head could turn into like the emoji with the <laughs> I think I've now said that twice this week. So yeah, so, <laughs> and that's, that's, a, that's a good statement, Carrie, because I know I do that. I know 
a lot of my own personal happiness, I feel is dependent on if everyone around me is also happy. Like, oh my God, I'm going to develop, you know, all these different things within myself and and I got to just tell everybody else about it. So you all can around me can be in the same exact mental state because I'm not leaving anybody behind in that, right? Yes. Because and, I love you all and I want you all to know it so much. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, then we, we really have to consider the fact that we are only enough for ourselves. Meaning... Yeah. Each individual has to recognize their own self-worth and lift themselves up knowing that they are enough for themselves in this life because we can't be everything for everybody else because then we have nothing left for ourselves. Right. And I think that that's also been like a really hard lesson for, for me personally and, and I'm sure, you know, anyone else listening could probably relate in some portion of their, you know, existence, but just trying to focus on myself and make myself happy and remember that when you fix, not fix, but when you work on this, everything reflects externally with that. Yeah. And, and it's I a hard reminder super important to recognize that because otherwise we are stuck in this mindset that if we're only thinking about ourselves, well, then we're being selfish, right? And if we have dependence, right? I know that that would be a huge struggle to mm-hmm. prioritize yourself over your dependence. Now, obviously there has to be some flexibility for that because babies, children, they need that additional care that right. adults may not need that hands-on as much. But just like you said, when we focus that love and that attention and that energy and that self-care on ourselves, ooh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Somebody must be walking by my house. <laughs> <laughs> that's your fur babies going like yeah, pay attention to me. Hello. That's, that's Nova. <laughs> Nova is the guard dog for sure. <laughs> um, But when we, (laughs) uh, when we practice putting that energy towards ourselves, that, that love, that self-care, you nailed it on the head. It emulates outside of us. When we do good for ourselves, we feel, feel more energized to do good for others and to lift each other up. So we're, when we're in that positive mental state, when we've filled our cup doing the self-care activities that we need, we can care for others better because we've been able to care for ourselves. It's, it's not selfish right. to love yourself and to focus on yourself and provide yourself with what you need. I agree. And it's also just as important to you know, and this is something that I was thinking about too, while going through this, because I felt myself having this, like, oh my gosh, Shira, you've, you've taught, you've learned a lot. You you're, you're teaching a lot on navigating. Oh, wow. Now I, now I realize why that notepad flipped to us navigating fear, right? It should be okay. And you should feel okay understanding that you're navigating it, understanding that you're having these emotional responses and you're learning from each and every one of these moments. And so not not feeling right. Like to to recognize the fear and not feeling shame towards even having it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I was having that kind of a moment myself. It's like, Oh, you know, I, I, Shire, you're better than this. Right. I was saying things like that to myself. And then I would step back and be like, okay, if I were to just zoom on out to complete zero, zero percent, you know, or like just a zero frequency, thank you. Zero point frequency or just full on like neutrality of this situation. And I'm looking at myself and I'm thinking, okay, should you feel shame towards this? Why are you feeling shame towards this? Because it's 100% human for me to just have these types of emotions. 
these are belief systems that I'm slowly but surely like knocking down one by one, step by step. There's all these things that are coming into my presence for a reason. There's all these things that I'm navigating and learning while I'm navigating it, including this thing called fear, right? Mm -hmm. And and having my just awareness around the entire situation was such an incredible like learning experience. I mean, so much so that it, I mean, I'm, I'm getting these like synchronistic reminders of like, yeah, this is something, this is good. Like, this is a good thing that you went through this. It's a good thing that you experienced this because now you've brought awareness to it. And next time it happens, you'll be easier on yourself when navigating it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's going to stop. It's not going to suck <laughs> when you're navigating it, but that's okay. Right. And, and maybe in the moment when you are being Shira in that fear or being Carrie in that fear, being listener in that fear, that you take that step back and look at it from the other person's point, like perspective, like you would be having that conversation with that other person telling them, you know, I'm, I want to do this and I, I don't want you to be hurt by it. Right. And if you look at it from that other person's perspective and start to feel that love from them, well, now Mm. you're creating that, that thought process that the outcome might not be based in fear. Right. I agree. I 100% agree. And it's so funny because like, I I was sitting here thinking about, because I struggle with this too. You know, I want to be everything for everybody as well. And I struggle with saying no and not feeling guilty or shame you know, for, for saying no. And it just in my head came to me just now. Well, if you just step back and look at it from that other person's perspective, can you see where they can have love for you in those moments? Yeah. And it was, it was such a cool, like, like, I wish you could have just been in my brain when you and I were talking in your house yesterday and I wish you could have been in my brain and just heard all the little, like, what? (laughs) Wait a minute. Shit. I made all that up in my own head. Really? (laughs) And then I just got super overwhelmed. Hence the small crying session. And I was just like, I'm so happy. You love me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, who, who am I, who are we yeah. to tell others that they need to minimize themselves and what they want and their yeah. desires to make me happy? No, right. no, we're all each having our own individual experiences. So who are we as individuals to stop other individuals from having the experiences that they need to have to have the growth? I know. And it, I just, and it's so funny because for me personally, I know that about you. Like I just created a scenario that I even personally knew would probably not be a situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it was this overwhelming lesson I needed to learn. And, and that's, that's really what it was. And and I'm fully aware of that right now. And I kept getting these little messages, like the song that I was listening to, I was not in a great place mentally on my way to your house yesterday. And I, and I, the song that came on, you know, uh, oh my gosh, what is it called? Anyway, I'll have to think of it, but I remember like hearing it come in. And at that time I wasn't willing to listen to the message. Right. So I was just kind of like, uh, I don't want to hear this right now. And I like turned it off, you know, like, <laughs> but it was related to, you know, now looking back at it, I'll have to remember what the name darn name of the song is but looking back at it now I'm just like they were trying to tell me then like hey pay attention to this this is important listen to what you're thinking right like <laughs> when I say they I'm I'm referring to Mount Glass just so we're clear <laughs> so but it's interesting and then you know the notebook thing this morning I was like well that's like you know message number 10 so okay let's talk <laughs> let's talk about it <laughs> So anyway, it's kind of exciting, honestly. So are there any other ways that we can help navigate that fear? Um, 
sometimes when you are having that fear, I feel like you do have to actually experience it in the sense of sitting back and letting it flow. Um, and the best way I know how to explain that at the moment is by utilizing my own experience in this situation as an example. So mine was an, an emotional roller coaster for about a 48 hour period, right? And so for me, it was creating my own fear, creating a future situation that, I mean, there's no way to know whether or not that was going to happen. Um, and so understanding and realizing, I mean, granted, it took me another day for me to actually come to this, but realizing that I did create that fear on, all on my own that I did create that entire reality that didn't even come to fruition. Um, that bringing your own awareness to that is probably one of the biggest things because then you can start, once you're aware of it, you can start to navigate it. Uh, you can start to actually pinpoint all the different areas within yourself that you know might be causing that to happen. Like, and understanding at the same time that to give yourself some space and to give yourself um, love in the sense that it's okay to navigate this. It's okay to feel it. Uh, don't be ashamed of having to feel that. Um, don't be ashamed if you got to sit in a corner and cry for a while or, you know, cry to your friend or, or family member or whatever when you're stuffed going through it. Or right, or a stuffed baby. animal. Yeah. <laughs> I know Webster and his little head tilts and I'm crying. He's just like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's completely okay to do that. But the very best and important step was the bringing myself to awareness, having that little aha moment of, oh, oh snap, I, I literally just created this. This was all in my own little head. And on a note, you know, of feeling the fear, having to actually like not having to, but uh, experiencing that fear. It's not, it's not a bad thing to have fear, but one of the best ways past something is to go through it. So yeah. diving deeper, like, why is this fear coming up? What is this related to? And it could be related to like a traumatizing experience in your teenage years or, uh, childhood years, or it could be related to something that happened in maybe another lifetime or something that happened in your um, genealogical history, right? And that's been passed down from generation to generation of family members just creating this pattern. So when we start to do the deeper work with love for ourselves is when we start healing that and start being able to recognize why and how those patterns are created and repeated and how we can kind of utilize that awareness to stop and reframe and recreate new patterns. Yeah, exactly. And um, sorry, uh, my, my team, my mountain class is being quite verbal today. So one of the other things that I'm hearing is space giving yourself space to acknowledge that because there were so many times within that 48 hour period where a lot of things just kept coming up mm -hmm. and it was perpetuating that fear-based process. And I wasn't giving myself, I was feeling as if I didn't even have control over giving myself time mm -hmm. to, to sit back and reflect and think about it at all. Yeah. So it was just like one thing after another felt like it was just coming up, you know, and I was having to address this and do this and do that and move to this and do, you know, like I wasn't providing myself any time or space to actually navigate. And it was just when I slowed down and took like 30 minutes to myself to just sit back and be like, and ask myself the single question, why am I doing this? why, why is this present in my reality right now? It, and it was that moment that just like, oh, okay. Something's up here. I need to, I need to learn this. Right. And that was kind of the, but that space that having that space to 
just even think for a second. And sometimes we don't realize that when we're on that go, 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 go state Mm -hmm. and that we're not giving ourselves enough space to even take care of those types of thought processes or, or navigate that fear. Right. We, we use a lot of distracting techniques to avoid navigating those fears and diving deeper. And that's just like brush and dirt under the rug. It doesn't go anywhere. Right. It's just going to sit there and be stinky. And every once in a while, you'll get a whiff, you know, as you walk by. (laughs) (laughs) And and then it'll just rear its little head up and it's like, hi, I'm still here. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You haven't taken care of this. (laughs) So, again, you know, moving past these things, we got to dive into it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, puppies. (laughs) And the distractions are always fun. (laughs) And and those distractions being like TV and, you know, uh, social media and movies and playing video games and, you know, anything that keeps it at surface level to where you're not having to actually look inward. Oh yeah. And, and that is one of the biggest, who that's the hard hitting fear factor that <laughs> work, is work. Also a distraction. <laughs> work can be a distraction. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, the, <laughs> and I, I would probably say that work is normally my number one default of distraction for myself. So, and it took a really long time for me to figure out that I was doing that because while, while I was in it, I was just kind of like, Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I can't face that right now. I've got to work. Like how many times have you heard people say that? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I can't deal with that at the moment. I've got to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Just putting it aside and putting it aside, putting it aside, using Mm -hmm. that as the catalyst to Mm -hmm. just shove it to the back. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a, a real big heavy hitter for myself. And I know that that's something I'm still working on and not, and not doing. And, you know, especially if you are like salary or, you know, you're working from home, so you're not setting those boundaries for yourself and you're like, eh, I'll come back to that a little bit later, even though, you know, you want to set the boundaries for your workspace and your personal space rather than meshing them and getting them confused and diluted. Yeah. It's real easy. It is. Say. I'll just come back to those emails uh, tonight. <laughs> we literally are like our own creators of our own chaos. And it is <laughs> hilarious when you so realize funny. it <laughs> and you look back at it and you're just like, yeah, that's right. I did all that. <laughs> so. I, I'm creating my chaos right now with this house renovation. <laughs> it's going to be so beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're moving in 12 days and we still have to finish painting and get the floors in. <laughs> I know, but at the same time, I'm like, ooh, you're going to have a new background and it's going to be amazing <laughs> in your own personal space. And, yes. you know, yeah. homeownership is ridiculous, but it, it can be like really fun too. I, I'm excited for seeing the progress in the past couple of weeks, you know, seeing things be put back together. We've broken down the old patterns of the house because yeah. <laughs> it's not going to flood anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a laughing matter, but the look on your face currently is. <laughs> Yes, our brand new, or it's not brand new, it's new to us. It yeah. flooded three weeks after we had access to it because of a drainage issue. And no, it's not in a flood zone. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but again, luckily it was before any of our stuff was in there, before all of our new kitchen was in there and we were able to address it, right? Things come up for a reason, even though it's very stressful, they come up for a reason so that you can address them so that you can create strength within your being, within your home, within your space space and flourish. And it takes you right back to the whole, like, it sucks when you're in it. It freaking Mm -hmm. sucks when you're in it. It's stressful. It makes you sad. It makes you angry. Like you start feeling those types of like 
really kind of (laughs) fear-based negative emotions, right? But then when you do change your perspective on it, like for your situation, it was, hey, what if this house had all your furniture in it at the time, you know, and now you have to open up walls and change out wood and replace things, right? Well, and and the fear was like when we were finding all these issues because we took out all the walls in the kitchen the living the dining room and several other places and found wood rod and had to change out (laughs) structural beams and you know uh, protect the house from future flooding protect the house from fire with the electrical stuff because that was a whole nother mess that we found um it was a lot of fear about well crap did we buy just a complete lemon and now we are stuck with this like hell hole and what are we going to do moving forward? But again, all this stuff was brought up so that it could be addressed and we could adjust it to be more protective, to be more, um, basically we were, we were loving on the house quite a bit so yeah. that it would love on us back. <laughs> and look at all of the different strengths that you and your partner have learned about yourselves and about one another. It's been a huge learning curve all the way around. I mean, I saw you climb up to a third floor, 15 foot high (laughs) scaffold, and I didn't know you'd do that. So that was kind of cool, right? (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) Oh man, watching John and I try and put that scaffolding together was just (laughs) making me laugh. Please tell me you recorded that. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Darn. <laughs> we were not, we were in the moment of being afraid, right? Now. <laughs> because as we're building it, right, I'm having to climb up and it doesn't have the, the cage around the top. And my dad oh was my there gosh. as well. And John is um, afraid of heights and me, you know, I'm, I'm a monkey, but again, <laughs> it didn't feel hundred percent stable. And he basically had to climb up onto our second floor with the cage of the scaffolding and hand it to me over the Juliet balcony while I stood on the scaffolding. Oh to my gosh. Attach it on there. Mom, I'm sorry if you're listening to this. I know you, you said that you did not want to know that I was on the scaffolding, but <laughs> Parental advisory alert. <laughs> Trigger warning, mom. <laughs> Trigger warning, mom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I hope you share. Uh, do you plan, you're planning on sharing yeah. the before and afters? Yeah, I kind of want to wait for the kitchen to be installed. Oh yeah. But sure. um, to, to do a final reveal rather than the midway reveal. But I'm so excited. Good. You know how much I love me some before and afters. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's like a HGTV, like ingrained favorite. It just makes my heart happy when you create new spaces. (laughs) So (laughs) awesome. All right. Friends, family, listeners, we love you all so, so much. Thank you for being a part of our little posse here and a part of our collective all together and keep on, uh, addressing those fears as you get to them. Yeah. So important to just be aware of it. It's not bad. It's not good. It just is. And love yourself through it. Absolutely. All right. Until next time. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Lovely infinite beings, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment and being open to receiving light and love. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we really look forward to our next connection. And as a reminder, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Love Always Self, which will be linked in the show notes. We would love to hear from y'all. So if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, please email us at contact at lovealwaysself.com or send us a private message on our social media. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, love love always always self.
Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you take upon the information on this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from information discussed in this podcast.